throw them in the chat and our team will be getting back with you with David. Um, if there's any questions that we can't answer at this time uh, via the, the very helpful documentation that David shares after these trainings. So um, very excited to be collaborating with you all today. Even last week, the training that I participated in with Alex um, from um, CPO team uh, really just helped open my eyes to some of the other ways that we can effectively collaborate with this group. And so just very open to that um, and looking forward to moving forward in excellence. Um, so again, my name is Ariel Johnson. Um, just a quick background on myself since I'm fairly new to the state. I am from Detroit, Michigan. I was the deputy director of the Civil Rights Inclusion and Opportunity Department for the city of Detroit with Mayor Duggan. Um, that is the oldest municipal civil rights department of its kind, and it actually started after race riots that happened in the 1940s. Um, and so what that department was responsible was really ensuring that there was um, equity, inclusion, um, and true intentionality from the city of Detroit as it looked to ensure a racial equity, but also um, in ensuring access and equality for everyone um, based on a protected class in the city of Detroit. Um, so we did a lot of compliance Compliance work similar to what we do in BEP, as well as a lot of certification of Detroit based businesses, Detroit headquartered businesses, and making sure that Detroiters had opportunities to work on large development projects. So I'm um, just really excited to be at the state of Illinois now um, and continuing that work and really at a much larger scale. Um, and so we'll just go ahead and jump into it. I won't spend much time in telling you all what BEP is because most of you already know this already. Um, but for those of you who may be fairly new, which I, um, I'm aware that there are some of you on this call who are pretty new to the state as well. Um, BEP is the business enterprise program and we are aimed to promote an inclusive and competitive business environment that will help business enterprise own in enterprises owned by minorities, women, and persons with disabilities increase their capacity, grow revenue, and enhance economic impact in their community. Um, and so some of the things we're going to talk about really is when you look at it, um, our way of being intentional and in ensuring that we have equitable and ac accessible uh, processes and policies that really ensure quality access for everyone who wishes to participate in procurement with the state of Illinois. Um, you know, after everything in 2020 and everyone's talking about diversity, equity and inclusion, really, truly ensuring that you have an equitable uh, state, city, country um, is, is looking at the way that you do things, the way that you approach programming, the way that you approach processes, policies and making sure that sometimes even unintentional barriers are removed and addressed. And so that is truly what we are set up to do with the business enterprise program um, with your partnership and teamwork. Um, and then this is just a quick overview. I won't even spend two seconds on the slide. Just talks about our history and other initiatives that we have going on within BEP. Um, outreach is one thing that you will notice um, within our policy memo that I will cover, cover shortly. Um, and so I'll, I'll stop here um, in regards to um, uh, many of you may have heard of the new goal setting methodology. Um, there was a new goal setting manual that was released as well as a new goal setting form. Um, and so all that is available to you and um, we can resend and share that information to anyone who has not received any updated information in regards to the new uh, goal setting methodology. Um, but in addition to that, what you will receive today, if you haven't already, is our policy memo. And so our policy memo has been fully updated as of uh, just as soon as yesterday. So it is the most updated policy memo. Um, I will be sharing my screen shortly just to um, show you all around a couple of different documents. Um, but the intention with the policy memo is really to serve to you as a one stop shop um, in regards to policies and the way that BEP is approaching and several different things. Um, and so hopefully that can be helpful to you. It is a working document. And so if there is ever any changes to our policies or updates, we will send out a new policy memo um, to you all to make sure that you understand and you have all of the information ready at your fingertips. Um, and so I will we'll pull that up in just a bit. Um, and then this is the, the goal setting form that I mentioned as well. Um, so in addition to that, we are in the process of now that the policy memo is updated and you will receive today, uh, we are also updating our standard operating procedures, which is very similar to the policy memo, but may have some more additional helpful information there. And so um, to the extent that we have all of that available, you will have it um, as well. 
Uh, another thing that we have in the works that we're working with communications team on is our new compliance website. And so there you will be able to find um, updated reports, any other um, updated information and, and quality uh, resources from the compliance team over here at BEP on that new website. And so there are some things currently on our website as well. However, um, it needs a little bit of updating, right? So um, you will be able to have access to that. Um, hopefully by the end of April, um, at least the, the first version of that website will be up, but um, you'll continue to get um, details and information on that as we go through. Um, so I think the big thing last week was the conversations of DCMS, the Diversity Compliance Monitoring System. Um, and we were calling it DCMS, and I think sometimes it gets confusing. Um, B2G now, DCMS is the same thing, right? Um, and so now you have other um, resources and, and opportunities to get engaged with the, um, the administration of your contracts uh, within this portal. And so I'm actually going to switch my screen right now. Um, so that I can share with you all. Um, where'd it go? So I can share with you all a couple of different um, resources there. And I'm sorry, I can't find where to stop sharing my screen. Oh, here it is. I'm using dual monitors and it's all the way at the, my other monitor. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, one, in order to get access to DCMS, if you do not have access already, you can do so with um, your BEP compliance officer. What we will need from you is your name, your title, your phone number, and your agency in order to share that. And so really quickly, there is a self-training tool available to you. Um, that you can do trainings and look at manuals in real time. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things on my slide as well, but I think that it's gonna be helpful for you to see this job aid um, that is available to you as well. And I just gotta make sure that I pull it up correctly. Thank you for your patience. Here we are. I've got so many documents up that I wanna share, so. So there, there are, I think, maybe eight manuals available um, once you get into B2G Now, DCMS, um, that you'll be able to pull up. And I will show you where to find those within the portal as well. Um, so this manual walks you through, and I won't go through all of it. As you see, it is 85 pages long. Um, but what's so amazing about it is, if you're like me, um, I usually like to find what I need, get to it, and then move on with the, the things that I need to get done, rather than maybe sitting through a three-hour training to find five minutes worth of information that I needed. Um, however, however you learn, all of that information is available on, these, uh, on the platform. So I think that's really cool. Um, so here... Um, first, you can look through the table of contents of, um, if you are similar to me, and you just want to get to the information um, that you need. Um, you can find it here at the front of your manual. Um, but some of the things just based on the conversations that we had last week, if you want to jump and search to a certain contract, there are instructions on how to search and properly view for particular for specific contracts. Um, in addition, I'll jump over to page 13. Um, this is a little bit of what the output will look like. You will have contract lists available to you. And then it even also gives you some best, best practices and information in regards to working with your contract management page. Um, I will jump over to page 15 and please ask questions if you need. I know there's a lot of information, um, but I just want you all to kind of see the high level view um, and there will be um, a more in-depth training that we'll, we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, here, there were questions of how do I know if we're reaching our goals um, or if, I, if my contracts are currently compliant, um, that information you will be able to find here. There's also information about that within the policy memo that we are sharing today. BEP does consistently send out information to the prime um, as well as subcontractors to make sure that they have properly submitted information that they need to within to the portal. Um, and then you will be able to see whether or not um, they have met their goals. 
Um, and so yeah, this is just a little bit of what it looks like within the portal, just so you all have the opportunity to see. I know some of you um, did not, uh, were not aware of it last week. And so I just wanted to scroll through for you all and I hope this is helpful. Um, here there's in the breakdown of goals, which um, if you were able to read on the new legislation, um, that information is that is going to be updated as of January 1, 2022 um, in regards to the breakdown of goals. And I think there may have been one other page I wanted you all to see in this document. And this is here managing subcontractors. So you can even, even um, level down even further to see within subcontractors. So now what you are able to do with this information, um, I don't want to misspeak. I know that some things are view only, but you do have some opportunity to also um, maybe pull some information. For instance, if um, you have a request internally uh, to be able to analyze this data, this information further. Um, there are ways that you can pull reports. Um, however, you would have to check with your user access of how how um, much data you can export. Um, however, all of it will be available to you to to view only. I know for sure, um, but we you would need to check with um, your BP compliance officer to ensure how much of that information you can actually um, export um, in reporting. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing and make sure there are not any questions in the chat as it relates specifically to this. Are agencies required to enter contracts into the system? Yes. Um, so the next thing I can share to answer that question, um, perfect timing, is I'll switch over to the project report show expenditures. Um, I believe the subcontractor report does show expenditures. Um, and I can verify that for you in a couple seconds. Um, so this, hey, Aaron, here this is, is Dave. Sorry, real quick. Uh -huh. I, um, just so you don't have to do double duty, I can monitor some questions and then that way you can stay focused on what you need to. That's okay. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Um, so the policy memo that you all will receive today, um, I added a table of contents at the front just because me coming in new, it was super overwhelming to be like, this is a lot of information and I have to literally read through 10 pages to find what I need. So um, we added a table of contents at the front. You can click it, click what you're looking for, and it will take you there. And so um, what was that last question? Oh, in regards to DCMS. So I will click on, uh, do, 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 do. here we go. And we can uh, look through all this information here in regards to, oh, I clicked the wrong one. Um, but this is all of the information that will be pr provided to you um, within the policy memo. Um, there is a section here in regards to DCMS and I did not click on it properly. So we will scroll to get there. Um, but yes, so you are required to enter your information. Um, here it is right here. Um, so it relies on specific procurement data to be um, complete in its function. So BP requires that the agency APOs supply the required system data, if not currently provided by the bid by system interface. So some of the information you may not need to enter if we were able to um, successfully trans transition the information over um, with the support of do it um, and utilizing the bid by system. However, in the instance that it's not that we do not already have that information available to us. Uh, we do ask for your diligence of providing the contract data, utilizing the items below. So very simple information that um, I'm pretty sure each of you would have ready to you at your fingertips. Um, but of course we are looking to do this um, in a more effective and quick way and, and get it transitioned over automatically. But in the instance that we are not able to, we do need your support with entering this data so that we can um, continue to consistently manage the uh, the compliance of the contracts. Um, we do have another question, Ariel. Mm -hmm. um, another question is in regards to getting access to the B2G Now reports, is that, do they contact your office or who uh, who could potentially help them get access to these reports? Yes, yeah, so good question. So the um, the BEP compliance officer that you normally work with will be able to give you access. What they will need from you in order to give access is the user's name, phone number, email, your position or your title. 
um, in your agency. And so if you can send that information over to the compliance officer that you normally work with within BEP, um, they can take care of that for you not without a problem. Thank you for that question. Um, so yes, um, the system is based on, as I mentioned again, um, the system will is based on information supplied through bid by the IOC and contracting vendors. Um, it is mandated by the General Assembly and the governor. Um, training on this new system is provided by the software developer, and I will show you how to get there now. I almost want to knock on Sorry. wood because I've been doing good without freezing. So, <laughs> yeah, you question? can make it through all this without it freezing. That's always a that's always a good thing. Um, yeah, we do have another question, but it you may. You may already be starting to get into it. So it's how do we know what information is coming from bid buy um, into the system? Is there a list of that information or is that something that we should follow up with? Um, so that's a good question. There is a feature to be able to search for your contracts once you're in there. And so that's a great indicator for you to be able if you're searching for it and it's not there. Um, but also um, your compliance officer it will also can reach out to you and let you know as well. We can you can work with BP to make sure that you, we have all of your updated information. Um, and I will ask my team I, that can be one of the follow up questions um, that we'll send over. I can make sure see if there's any way that my team can run a report um, as well to be a little bit more proactive and prevent you all from having to do some digging. So I'll follow up on that one. Um, so here is the trainings, and I'll actually go here first. Um, and I hope everyone can see this. Um, when you log into the portal and you see your home screen, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this section here that says tools. And it has other tools like change your password and what have you. But then it's take a training class. Then there's the training videos and library as well. Um, and so you'll be able to click on that to get access to that PDF um, that that I just showed you all. So there's several um, that was just one job aid. There's several others um, just to, in, uh, in regards to, to what you want to do. So there's one just in regards to the platform in general. Um, and then there's ones on certification, which may is not really applicable to this group. Um, but whatever you want to do in the system, there is a PDF that you can download to have access to. And then there are the training videos. In addition to that, if you are a person that you prefer to have a training where you can ask questions and you can stop and, and actually talk to the facilitator, that's what this is here. Let me click on that. So you can RSVP uh, for certain trainings and sessions as well, based on individual topics. Um, so you will see that there is um, a contract compliance training coming up uh, this Thursday, um, and there are 133 spots left. And so um, I will be um, attending that training, as well as there is going to be um, a, a more in-depth training that happens in May, but. Um, I think that these trainings are going to be the most beneficial for this group. Um, one thing that BEP can start doing is also reminding you all of some of these trainings when we send out our monthly bulletins to you. Um, and of course, if you have any additional questions or thoughts as you navigate through these trainings, my email is in that policy memo. And so feel free to send us a note because we want to make sure that everyone has um, as many resources as possible and that all of your questions are answered and this is an easy platform for you to navigate in. Hey, Ariel, I, I apologize. I had a, a connection issue, so I got kicked off just for a quick second. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a question that came in. I'm not sure if you hit it, so please let me know. Uh, when the contractor exceeds the goal set in the original solicitation, I don't think bid by captures that additional spend does CMS and how so? Did that get touched on yet? Uh, it did not. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do believe we we are able to identify when there is additional spend. Um, it, I don't. It, it's not necessarily counted towards the goal, of course, because you have achieved the goal. Um, but that that is something that we can capture. Okay, and then also just another one. Um, how do we sign up to receive the monthly bulletin? 
is that something that's just automatically sent out or um yeah they're just asking yeah. about the monthly bulletin yeah, so um, that comes from our, I believe, our director's office. So I will check and make sure that the um, that their email list is up to date. But I know that they just, I believe, they're currently just sending it to um, all APOs and SPOs. I'm, I believe, but I can confirm that the BEP doesn't send that one directly. Um, but I'll confirm and I'll make sure that we have the most up to date list. So thank you for that question. Awesome. Um, so continuing to move right along and I didn't uh, share this, put this in presentation mode here. Um, but I'll just scroll through. Um, so there is an updated utilization plan. I won't spend too much time here on this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Before I move forward, um, April 20th, the month, the APO meeting BEP will be on the agenda there as well. And we'll be sharing additional information. Um, um, a little bit more in depth in regards to DCMS as well during that training. Um, and that is on April 20th. I don't know the exact time, but I know that it is the APL meeting that BEP will be joining there as well. Um, so the, the new util utilization plan is now available um, and is being um, it is now required to be utilized um, as opposed to what was being used previously. Um, you will also see information in regards to an effective view plan, um, the participation agreements, good faith efforts um, within the policy memo that is being sent today as well. Um, we tried to be as specific as possible within the policy memo. Um, again, thank you for all the questions you all asked last week because it also informed us on additional information that we may need to add to the policy memo as it relates to good faith efforts and new plans. And so, um, again, if you have any additional questions, once you receive that policy memo, please let us know because it is um, serving as um, uh, just kind of a prompt to make sure that we have um, answered all of your questions proactively there. And then this is just um, uh, additional it's kind of just overview on the U plan, but I believe that much of this group is pretty much um, aware of the U plan. We do have a couple other questions if you're available. I don't want to jump in Please. if you're getting into a flow there, um, but please let me know. We have a couple. Um, let's see here. So, what are the available access levels for the system? I assume that's DCMS. Yes. Um, so there are, there's the administrator view and then there are, there's the view only, which I believe much of this group will just have the ability to view only. I, I believe you can pull reports. Um, I didn't know if anyone, um, no, my team didn't let me know that. I believe you can pull reports, um, and the view only, um, the, the view only user setting and then there's administrative. I, I don't believe that we're using many of the others. Um, I know that there are lots of other user settings, but so far I've only seen the view only the view only and the administrative access. That we've been utilizing across the state. Okay, um, another does this apply to contracts funded entirely with federal funds? I think that was on our FAQ document as well. That was yes. Sent out. So uh, that entirely 100% with federal funds, no, um, but we outlined it um, pretty diligently in the uh, FAQ document that went out um, last week in regards to how to properly uh, apply, if any, goals to federally funded contracts. Um, okay, but thank yeah, you. if you oh, have sorry, state God. dollars, I'm sorry, uh, I, just to clarify, um, yes, it will be there if you have any state dollars on a contract. So if it's partially funded with federal funds and you have some state funds there, um, the portion of the contract that does utilize state funds can receive a goal and that will be tracked within DCMS. Okay, great. Uh, um, next question. Uh, in the U plan, uh, it states vendors are to use DCMS. Once the agency enters contract info, does BEP reach out to the vendor to educate and train them on how to use the system? Yes, we do reach out to the vendor, um, both the prime and the sub, and require them to enter uh, their financial information into the system. So we do um, make that connection. And to the extent that um, you all want to support us with 
making sure that they're doing that, that would be amazing as well. But we do make that contact. Okay, great. Um, let's see. I think I missed one up. Oh, sorry, I missed one up here. Um, our agency is utilizing GSA, NASPO, SourceWell more often these days. They're similar to sole sources, which are excluded from BEP. Since those contracts are technically not our contracts and we are just piggybacking off of them, should they be treated as sole source and not include BEP goals? Uh, yes, and that is um, one that we want to, I want to follow up with, with additional um, context, because that's one that we've been talking about a couple times this week. So, um, okay. we'll, we'll send follow up on that one. Okay. And then two more here for you, if, if we can. <laughs> um, does the request for access to DCMS need to come from an agency head, manager, deputy director, APO, et cetera, as well as the level of access? So as a part of getting that access to DCMS, does it need to come from the agency head or is it okay to come from the APO? No, nope, it can come from uh, the APO. And then if you have more than one, so for instance, uh, when I needed my access um, and our associate deputy, we just sent it together and they took care of it for us. So if you just have one representative from the agency and you wanna give access to uh, two other individuals, you can just send it all at once. And it doesn't matter who it comes from. Okay, great. And then one more here before we, before you move along. Um, how do we know who, okay, how does an agency know who their uh, BEP compliance officer is? How could they find that information? Um, so that, that you, you should be um, collaborating with them um, often if you've ever had to do anything with BEP. Um, however, if you just want to send me a note um, I can make sure that you're connected to the right person. I think that's probably the easiest way um, at this time. Okay, that's great. I, I'm I'm speculating here that a couple, some agencies may do procurements that are below that threshold mm -hmm. and, and rarely do above that. So they probably don't have a lot of contact um, yeah. to begin with. So, yep. That makes sense. Um, and, and that's actually all that I have for now, check my notes. Um, I will also send this presentation to David. I was supposed to send it to him yesterday, but I'll send it to him today um, as well. And so these links here are actually live links um, and you can click on them as well. Um, and I'll stop sharing because I think more questions are coming through. Yep, there are a couple more that just popped in. Um, if we only have view only, access, would we still have access to use the job aids or training? Yes. Yes. Anyone who has um, any access to the platform can get access to the trainings. Okay. And then going up, uh, what is the official BEP policy regarding software maintenance? I'm not sure um, if we need more information regarding that or not. Yeah, I would have to, I I'm, I'm don't know it off the top of my head, but I can share that with you. It's probably actually lives within do it but I will, um, I can find that. The maintenance isn't something that the agencies are responsible for. Okay, and then we have one more here. Um, how do you expect CMS BEP to change on one one twenty two when the Commission on Equity and Inclusion commences operations? Um, so a, a couple of things, right? So we would not be CMS. Uh, any longer, we would be reporting to the Commission on Equity and Inclusion. So BEP would be located. So that's the one thing. It would not be CMS BEP. It would be within uh, the CEI, Commission on Equity and Inclusion. Um, but in short, I would say I'm not sure because um, that commission would have a new chair um, and that chair uh, would you know, have some input on uh, several different things. Um, a couple of things um, we know that may change is the way that requested exemptions are executed currently and how that is handled, exemptions in generally. Um, but um, without knowing who the, the new chair is, that would be appointed by the governor and their priorities. I um, can't really give specific changes, but there definitely will be changes there. So I think it's smart to be um, prepared for that. Okay, and then one more. Uh, the new goal setting BEP methodology uses bid buy, but not all BEP vendors are in bid buy. 
excluding veterans, there are 3,220 firms registered on the vendor reg, but only 1,533 in bid buy. Since we are required to use bid buy, several BEP vendors are missing out on solicitation notices. How can that be addressed? Yep, um, you're 100 percent right. So we a BEP has um, at least since since I've been here since the end of January, been sending out constant communications to all BEP vendors, encouraging them to register for bid buy. Um, another thing that you will see within the policy memo is how BEP can support you with outreach. Now, if you have a, a procurement that has not been published yet, we will not send out any communication or support with any outreach until it is a publicly available. It, it is actually published. That is outlined within our policy memo. So there is now an outreach form that you can use um, to be able to ask BEP, can we make sure that um, that your opportunity is available to um, BEP vendors? So um, basically, where we will be reaching out to all BEP vendors, even if they aren't notified within bid buy that there's an opportunity, they will hear about it from BEP. Um, but of course, it is the the vendor's responsibility to get registered in bid buy. So we've just constantly been trying to make sure that we tell our vendors. Um, to register and bid by another initiative that we have is once you get certified, there's going to be a new orientation with BEP. And so basically your orientation will tell you as a new BEP vendor, what is bid by or how do you, what, what are best practices once you actually do receive a contract and um, how do you actually um, collaborate within DCMS? Um, how do you ask for support if you need support? Um, and so all of these are questions like, you know, once you just get certified, you have the piece of paper, you don't necessarily know what that any of this means. And so while we have their attention, um, while they're wishing to get their certification, we will be giving them that information. So I hope, I hope that that helps with increasing the number of vendors registered within bid buy. If we're basically asking them to do that right away, as soon as they get certified, uh, but you're hundred percent, right? And that is something that we're aggressively trying to, to work on increasing the number of folks within bid buy. Um, and in regards to the goal setting um, methodology, that's that's been another point that we've been making to our vendors that it impacts our it impacts our goals. Um, if you're not within bid buy, we are able to include that in the way that we approach goal setting. Um, okay, thank you. I do have another one that was a private message. We've been dealing with designating solicitations as a shelter market due to the governor's memo earlier this year. Is there going to be any trainings on sheltered market designations? Um, so shelter market designation is also in a policy memo. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, if your agency head wants to um, designate a shelter market, they just put that in writing and then they share it with us. So it's it's actually a pretty simple process. Um, our team um, within CMS is also um, ha has a new data initiative where we are um, identifying different industries where there where disparities exist um, and able to in an effort to help us identify additional shelter markets. Also, our disparity study, which many of your chief of staffs may have received communication on last week, um, will begin hopefully by the end of this week. And so we have reached out to each agency um, to ensure that we have a representative that can participate with us on the disparity study task force. And so that disparity study is going to help us um, determine a, a lot of things, but in regards to identifying areas where shelter markets may be necessary. Okay, great. And uh, just confirmation from Alex Wilson, cooperative joint purchase contracts, participations and piggybacks are not exempt from BEP. Further guidance and clarification is forthcoming. So Ariel, you mentioned kind of the same thing, but I just wanted to uh, confirm that in the chat as well. Thank you, Alex. Okay, that's that's all of our questions right now. Um, if we have any other follow ups, I can uh, save the chat. Ariel, I can touch base with you and uh, we can follow up with anybody who, who's needs. So um, a huge thanks to Ariel Johnson. Big, big, big thanks for joining us on the training Tuesday. That was fantastic. A lot of very helpful information and uh, we appreciate uh, you and your, your role and probably uh, more things to come from from Ariel to this group. So, uh, big thanks. If you have any other additional questions, you can reach out uh, to me or or Ariel, and uh, just know that sounds like some uh, additional training will be coming to the APOs um, April twentieth.
meeting and I think we'll sign off if we don't have anything else. All Thank right. you. Thanks. Thanks. Big round of applause for Ariel. Thank you, Ariel. Bye, guys. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you uh, next Tuesday for additional training. Join us then. Bye.